My name's Stuart Bowman, I'm the head brewer of BrewDog and uh, we're here at the Copenhagen beer celebration just talking a little bit about the signature BrewDog taste. Um, it's something a little bit indefinable for me, I'm not entirely sure what it is. I can sit down and pick a stone beer out of a lineup or a Lagunitas beer out of a lineup because they have uh, a quality to them or, or, a, or a taste to them that is absolutely theirs and nobody else's. What makes this quality? I have no idea. We use Scottish water, obviously being a Scottish brewery, so that may have something to do with it. It may be the fact that we use um, tipple malt, a blend between tipple and manasalt and malt uh, for all of our beers apart from our lagers. That could be something to do with it. But uh, it's, it's something that, um, it's something I really like to be honest. I really, really love not just the technical side to the brewing, but also the artistic side to the brewing. And that type of thing for me is very, very interesting because it's indefinable, we don't know what it is. Um, and that is where your artistic side comes out because you can put the best materials together with the best brewer and the best brew house and you don't know how it's gonna end up. So there's always a little bit of black magic involved and there's always a little bit of, yeah, I think this is going to work, I think this is going to go well. You go with your instinct uh, and you have fun with it. You experiment and that for me is beer. I'm Brad Dahlhofer from Bee Nectar Meadery from uh, Ferndale, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. Uh, we've been open since 2008. Uh, started just in my basement making meads, um, playing around and experimenting. Uh, we got laid off from our jobs and decided to open the meadery and uh, it's been pretty successful and we're happy with it. Uh, mostly we focus on like lower alcohol meads, 6% typically is about what we do. Um, so we'll mix the honey and water or honey and juice or whatever it is that we're, we're blending together. Uh, we'll ferment that out totally dry and then stabilize it so basically kill off the yeast and then add either you know, more fruit or honey or juice or whatever it is that we're doing at the time. Right. Unica and we are at Copenhagen Beer Celebration. Um, we are here to, to investigate, to make cross-pollination between cheese and uh, beer. It's not um, a journey to make a match of cheese and beer, but to see what happens when beer and, and cheese meet each other. Okay. So uh, we had this collaboration with Mikkeler uh, and uh, made some, some, some uh, Cheese, uh, where we took uh, the Michelin Imperial Stout Black, uh, vicious one, uh, and added the stout to milk and made cheese. Uh, so this little fella here, uh, we have uh, stout in, uh, inside the cheese, and then we treated the surface with the, the Black Imperial Stout as well. Uh, and it has a, an evil twin, a cousin here. Um, but we basically have the same cheese with added in pure stout, but we treated the surface with cherry wine. So it's a Danish fruit wine. And really it brings something different like the fruitiness and sweetness uh, where the black in black, uh, as the first one was called, it's, uh, it's like the, the power and the bitterness. Uh, we developed that uh, approach further um, and took a um, blue mold cheese uh, and uh, submerged it into an ocean of uh, Dublin Pure Pale Ale. This is the Mikkel uh, Hop Burn. And, uh, and we left it really submerged. The beer entered all cavities in, in this cheese and turned the, the fungus from a, a green color to a really dark, dark blue, uh, dark green color. And uh, really this cheese resurrected, it became something new. There is a fruitiness inside which you never see, uh, you usually don't see in, in a blue cheese. And uh, so obviously the, the beer does something to, to the molds. Uh, the last piece would look like ordinary uh, Dutch rubber cheese was the one I showed you in the beginning. This is our salute, our tribute to hops and to the beer celebration. 
So uh, we made a, 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 like an, um, a hop tea of Simcoe hops into water, added that to, to the milk and made cheese. And uh, it has a nice, clean, all the, the Simcoe flavors uh, are here. So we are standing here at Recycle Brewery, uh, head brewer Doug, right? Correct. So please tell us about your brewery, where you're from. Uh, our brewery is two breweries right now. We are Pex Cantina and Cycle Brewing. Uh, we have identical brew houses, both seven barrels, and it's really, all the beer is cycle beer at this point. Uh, we've really moved in that direction. It's all in St. Petersburg, Tampa Bay, Florida. And uh, you used to work for Cigar City, right? I started with Cigar City, uh, day one of production at Cigar City for three and a half years. I worked five days there, two days at Pegs, it was three years of that. I had enough, I needed to do my own thing. Uh, and Pegs is a restaurant, right? It's my family's restaurant. Yeah, and uh, you're the head brewer, right? Yep. So uh, is um, Cycle Brewing and Pegs the same, or is Cycle Brewing separate from... Uh, the beer, the beer is the same. Yeah. I'm, I'm the head brewer, I make all the recipes and uh, do almost all the brewing. We actually have grown, I have an assistant brewer now. Very exciting, um, but shorter work days. Yeah, shorter work days. Um, no, the, the beers are the same. Peg's Cantina, as far as a beer brand, is never was intended to be a beer brand. It was just a restaurant. And Cycle Brewing, we kind of knew we wanted to create a brand. We wanted to have beer on tap and restaurants start to grow a little bit. That's why Cycle Brewing exists now. Any reason why you want to have two names? A lot of reasons, actually. Uh, there's a lot of issues with uh, Peg's Cantina. It's not mine. Uh, Cycle Brewing is mine. On top of that, um, if we wanted to sell the restaurant, which I, we may want to do, it's my family's restaurant, but we've been out in 10 years kind of over being there all the time. So if we want to sell that off, that way we don't lose our, our brewery identity. Yep. So uh, last year, uh, a bit of a mishap. Uh, your beers didn't arrive at CBC. What happened? Uh, I don't have any beer at the Kraft, or, uh, Copenhagen Beer Celebration. My beer is in Hamburg, so if anybody here planning a little road trip after, we can go to Hamburg. There's some really great beers. I was very disappointed. Uh, there was, I think I was a late invitation, and the shipping arrangements were specific to me uh, through Mikkel, through his staff never got picked up until about three weeks before CBC. I knew it was going to be close. Promises were made that it will be there, we'll make sure it happens, and uh, in the end it just, it was about a week late. Well, I saw some on the Killer uh, website uh, the week after, at least you got a, uh, a tap takeover though. Yeah, but, uh... <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I, was, I, I was actually glad because the beer was as fresh as it could be, and he was able to serve it and all that. This year it was, I was a little nervous, Extremely nervous, actually. We sent beer with plenty of time, but at the same time, it's you know, age is not always a friend of all styles. So it was IPAs. I was very nervous, but they did okay. So uh, you're basically a Florida-based uh, company, which sells mainly in Florida, or are you? We don't generally sell beer beyond about five miles from the brewery. Honestly, there's we're in a million-person county, it's the population. So there's and demand is growing. There's. It's a transition state. We have a long ways to go. I was talking with someone in Oregon. They say they're at 40% craft beer saturation, and uh, Florida, we're probably about four. So a lot of a lot of growth right at home right now.
So we bring in three different versions of the donut break, a raspberry, peanut butter and apple bacon. Um, and it's a beer we made kind of for fun. So I have a, a stout called Imperial Scotty Break, which is made with vanilla, coffee and almonds. And one time I just thought, uh, I just thought about dumping donuts in it to see how it came out. And uh, it actually tastes like a liquid donut. Um, people loved it. So we bought it further and, and bottled it also now. Um, so it's pretty much just a big pill style made with, with, made with vanilla coffee almonds and, and real donuts. We use 1,000 donuts for one batch, so it's a lot of donuts. I think it smells like something a cop would love to eat. I guess this pretty much sums up this festival in terms of, uh, you know, the, the stuff that's been going on here uh, and the trends that you see in the festival. So Berliner Weisse from, uh, well it's not fairly new, but it's still new, uh, it's, it's fairly new, but it's Colonel from England and uh, they have a Berliner Weisse with um, blackberries and uh, there's been a lot of those lightweight uh, New, newly created German styles like Gose and Berliner Weisse uh, at this festival. So this is pretty representative, I think. Cheers. Mm. It's nice and tart. Got that typical, pretty strong lactic uh, Berliner Weisse nose from the the sour mash. Uh, the blackberries aren't really that strong, I feel, but, but they're sort of complementary in, in the flavor profile. They, they don't stick out. They're there to, to create a harmony. It's good, and it's very CBC 2014. Sorry. Okay, so I'm Alejandro from Way Beer from Brazil. Uh, we are a small brewery. We're three and a half years old. This is the second time we're invited to this festival. Uh, we brought eight different beers, uh, a lot of beers with Brazilian characters, Brazilian fruit, Brazilian wood. Uh, the, Brazi the, the craft beer uh, scene in Brazil is growing really fast. There's a lot of good uh, breweries uh, coming up in the last couple of years. Uh, we are at a point where we are collaborating with beers all over the world. So we did some collaboration with Mee Keller. Uh, I know some other breweries did some collaboration with Brooklyn Brewery and other uh, American breweries. Uh, at this moment, we're starting to use uh, Brazilian uh, ingredients as long as Brazilian wood. Uh, we have, we're very American orientated, uh, a lot of hops, high quality, high, really good uh, beer. So yeah, the scene is growing really fast. We're really happy to be here and we'll hope to be next year here. So the craft, the craft uh, beer scene in Brazil, it's, uh, it's, it's growing really fast. Uh, people got an interest on uh, craft beer. Uh, a lot of breweries are coming up. Uh, hey man, sorry man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of new breweries are coming up with good quality. Uh, people is starting to go away from the regular mainstream beers. Uh, and this is a good thing. A lot of collaborations are going on. We're working a lot of uh, food pairing with beer. Um, so yeah, we're exploring that area. And the craft market is going, it's really, really fast. There was a festival in Brazil that two years ago had like 10,000 people. This year they had 50,000 people only for craft beer. So it's, it's really growing really fast. Yeah, it's really exciting.